Don't mind. Look it up. The Nazis. B Hall, Peterhead Jail. Prisoners locked up 23 hours a day. Officers in riot gear. They're now flinging guys up here 15, 18 year sentences. Lifers doing 20, 30 years. Nobody wants to stay in this for 20, 30 years. Do you know what I'm the place up. Yet some of Peterhead's high security prisoners now have new freedoms. For hostage takers and rioters, a more liberal regime. But can it survive? I'll never work in Peterhead. I'll never work because of the way where Peterhead is and the way it's run. What they need is places like this in the central belt. Today, inside Peterhead, 50 men classified as Scotland's most dangerous and difficult prisoners. What future now for the maximum security jail? The autumn of 1986, prisoners riot in Peterhead and Edinburgh. Prison officers are taken hostage and the sieges go on for days. It's the start of a year of violence in Scotland's jails. At Barlini, another rooftop protest by inmates. After a riot in B Hall, three staff are held hostage in a four-day siege. At Perth, rioters wave blood-stained clothing after sex offenders are slashed and taken hostage with a prison officer. During the siege, two rioters threaten murder. One holds a knife to a captive's throat. 9.33, two men on the roof, a prisoner and what looks like a prison officer. Peter Head and again another hostage crisis. On the roof of D Hall, prison officer Jackie Stewart, with a chain around his neck, is humiliated and abused. After this siege, all the hostage takers in Scottish jails are moved to Peter Head. 50 prisoners are locked up here in solitary confinement. In, in D and A halls, there's more freedom. The mood is more relaxed in E hall, but still there's a legacy of bitterness. 12 years this has been going on. 12 years these halls have been getting wrecked. Officers have been getting assaulted to get us out of here. 12 years it's been going on. No one ever learn. Nobody is happy to stay in Peterhead. Nobody ever will be happy to stay in Peterhead. They just can't seem to get out over to them. In the 70s, food protests started a decade of violence at Peterhead. Then came riots, hunger strikes and the slashing of the prison governor. Then a rooftop demonstration. In 1983, 11 officers injured in a riot. The next year, more riots and dirty protests and a prison officer stabbed. Then, in 1985, a new trend, hostage taking. Nine officers held in March, seven in November. In 86, fires destroy the cookhouse and laundry. And within a year, two major sieges at the jail. 22 months I've been locked up. So I would like the whole hole and that, oh, I on you go, but they would be there. No way. Because you know what's going to happen. Is that a way you're on a system? Like a wreck. I'd love an hour in Ryan. Because I would take part, I know I would. I covered myself my own shite. And the only reason that I'm lying in this hall is because they've promised me a move. They promised me that they would give me it in a month. They told me to go to Aberdeen for the month. That's six weeks ago. I'm still waiting. Until a couple of months ago, this was Peterhead's punishment block. Now it's been closed, a sign of the changing regime at the prison. No longer are prisoners locked in these cells with just a mattress for a bed. But in this hall, intransigent prisoners are still held in solitary confinement. This is Peterhead's B Hall. Eight prisoners here are locked in their cells for up to 23 hours a day. Their sentences range from 18 months to life. They're guarded round the clock by prison officers in riot gear. Every month, the governor must apply to the Scottish secretary to continue holding a prisoner under this regime. Three inmates have been locked up 18 months, one for two years. Billy is one of two B Hall prisoners on a dirty protest. Since March, he's smeared himself and his cell with excrement in a campaign to get out of Peterhead. These are the conditions he lives in up to 23 hours a day. Every week, he's given a clean cell and clean clothes. 
but his protest goes on, amid the din of louder protests. Every day, the prisoners are entitled to one hour's exercise outside Bee Hall. Apart from slopping out, it's the only daily chance they get to leave their cells. And the prisoner is always tightly guarded by four or five officers. A prison officer will manhandle me, you know, they'll grab a hold of my shoulder and give me a shove and things like that, you know. Uh, to me, I, I mean, I'm not going to get manhandled by anybody. It's as simple as that, you know. Have you assaulted prison officers in the past? Yes, but again, I must stress, I've only done it after being a uh, victim to an assault myself. So in that sense, I see it as a, a form of self-defence. I'm not coming after the protest until I'm moved out of this, out this jail. It's, uh, it's not really a jail, it's a zoo, you know? Conditions in the cell, the state you're in just now, yeah. aren't you bringing all this on yourself? No, I don't see it that way. I see as if I've been forced to live like this. I'm, we've just been forced, to, forced right into a corner. Uh, the, the way I am the new, they can't take nothing at all off me. They can, they can do nothing with me. Look at the way I'm armed. I've got nothing. I mean, it's, it's no... It's not a way to live, but uh, in a sense it gives me a kind of freedom. Because uh, at least the way I am the new, you know, I'm my own man. It's up to them to do all the running. Because, uh, I mean, if I've got to stay like this until I'm out, and that, that could be, if I lose some of remission, that could be March 1995, then I'll stay like this. Leave you me. Uh, so I'll let them do the running. In Peterhead this year, prison officers have reported more than 80 assaults by inmates. The B Hall officers are constantly on their guard. The minute we drop their guard, the prisoners tend to uh, start thinking of ideas for us, you know. Have there been times when you've needed the protective hearing? Yes. Oh, yes. yes. So tell me about those. Um, nine times out of the ten. When it does come in useful for us, it's, it's normally when prisoners are just emptying the, the contents of their pot. If nothing else, the visors stop you from getting in your face and your mouth, up your nose and all that, you know? Yeah, um, throw their urine uh, out the That's right. Ah, yeah. plus its contents. Um, there have been prisoners come out with shards of glass uh, that they've been wrapped in till to use as blades. Um, had we not wearing protective uh, clothing, who knows what would have happened. I have been punched, kicked, butted, bitten, spat at, covered with the contents of their clothes. And how have you reacted in that situation? It's, it's just part of the job, as far as I'm concerned. I don't know any different. I joined the service when this was a lockdown jail. It's claimed that prisoners in Bee Hall are beaten up by prison officers in Bee Hall. Well, I've been in there since November last year, and there has nobody been beaten up when I've been there at all. It's total fabrication. But are there incidents, are there violent incidents where you're, you're actually there, fighting with them? There are, there are violent incidents when we're, we're not necessarily fighting. Um, we're all trained in control and restraint techniques. Um, and when prisoners tend to talk about violence, this is what they're talking about, the control and restraint techniques that we operate for um, restraining violent prisoners. Um, these techniques are laid down by the courts. Um, all the staff here are taught locally. Uh, they're taught in their initial training course, and um, they do have a, a complaint in so much as they will feel pain, but they won't be damaged. There's no bruising, there's no broken bones or anything. All they get is uh, pain until they conform to behave themselves, you know, yeah. or until a situation's ended. These prisoners are conforming, and they're being rewarded. The ten inmates in E Hall have gradually moved from solitary lockup to almost total freedom within the confines of their area. 
facilities are good, and here, officers wear normal uniform, and prisoners run free. Well, you've got to be in Peterhead, this is the place to be, because conditions here are far superior to conditions elsewhere within Peterhead. Your day is more or less your own, to do as you please with. I mean, I can go out there and run whenever I feel like it. I can go into the weight room, use the weights whenever I feel like it. So as I said, this is a place to be if you've got to be in Peterhead. No, just, I'm still getting used to it, you know, you know, sometimes it gets a bit much, you've just got to go away and hide somewhere, you know. But, uh, some guys just take a wee bit longer than others, you know, to adjust. As it, it all depends how long you've been locked up. I've been locked up for two and a half years, and it takes a wee bit longer. So, I mean, that's my idea, the, the birds that's somewhere to go on my own, you know. I can get there and get lost for a day, you know. But despite the freedoms of E Hall, the strain of prison life is always there. Last February, a violent incident in the hall left three officers injured and four prisoners charged with assault. The crisis nearly ended the E Hall experiment, almost before it had begun. We were given the opportunity the next day by uh, Dr. Coyle, the governor, if we went, went, wished to return to a lockdown situation or carry on and salvage the uh, E Hall which, uh, admittedly, I would have preferred at the time of lockdown, but uh, Dr. Coyle uh, advised us, he didn't uh, pressurise us, but advised us that he thought it might be best if we carried on and salvaged what was left. We have done and seems to have been successful. I think the inmates down here, in the situation we have, are willing to come and go and willing to talk to staff. There'll be aggression, inner aggression, that's, be that, that's inevitable. But uh, we seem on the surface to be able to talk. And once we start talking, this is when we start to get rid of this aggression. One day we could be playing pool in here. And the screws could move again and say, do you want a game in a lot of guys don't play with them? But the next day, the same screw could be breaking your nose and be home. Same screw. It happens, people probably won't believe it, but it does happen. I don't really like them, man. I mean, what they've done to me in the past. What they've done to you guys in B-Hall. People are lying up in the cells in B-Hall. Mental torture. I know what they've done to everybody. Talk to some of them, I talk to some of them. But a lot of them, I don't like them. I don't like them at all. Adding to Peterhead's tension is the constant problem of visits. For most prisoners, relatives and friends live in Glasgow or Edinburgh, not in the northeast. And that means a 400 mile round trip every month. The governor says he's trying to make it easier for visits to take place. But this family have to stay overnight near the prison to make the most of their opportunity. Prisoners complain the visiting room is oppressive and cramped. A new building is promised. And on the length of time of visits, the governor says he's being flexible. But despite his intentions, visits remain a source of friction. No! No! I, I hate it. I don't like it. But if it's got to be done, like I've got to like, come out and see your husband, sort of thing. Plus the fact that they should get to see their dad and that kind. But the journey itself is terrible. I mean, it's about two and a half hours on the train. When you got off the train, you've got to get the bus up. So when I come up with the bench, like, I always stay a couple of nights. The very isolation of Peterhead is the root of the prisoner's discontent. As long as I'm in Peterhead, I'll never see my family. I see my wife, who stands by me, comes up every visit. But I don't see my immediate family, my mother, my father. I've never seen my father since I've been sentenced. He's too old to travel. I've seen my mother a couple of times. Now she's too old to travel. People are getting on. Uh, they say you can get a, a doctor's line and go for a visit, a home visit. But that means surrounding your mother's house with armed police or whatever, uh, police thugs. Now, you, you, you don't need to be a murderer, you don't need to be a bank robber, but they still surround your house with thugs and whatnot. 
It's the embarrassment it causes your family puts guys off. If visits are the major grievance, then food is a constant irritation. Inmates complain often about their diet. The prison authorities admit it can be monotonous, but say the quality of the fare is good. Usual high standard. Numerous complaints have been, and numerous incidences over the food. I mean, his officers have been assaulted right, left, and centre. Solely because they've been assaulted. But it's okay, it'll pass a couple of days of food. Fear, it's, fear, it's no fear at all, it's garbage. Right, but the next day, a couple of days later, it's back to square one. They're sending the same rubbish down. I mean, you see the colour of the, I mean, look at the colour yeah. of the ties, they're meant to be white. Yeah, white. They're grey. Look at the state of them. Just Some people may say yeah, you're yeah. lucky to be getting that. <laughs> they're quite, they're quite to see what they like about getting it, no. Because so we're will... prisoners. We all know we're prisoners, but surely we're entitled to be fed. Whether we're prisoners or not, we're entitled to be fed. This group of inmates are very different from the hostage takers and the rioters. These men are protection prisoners, mainly sex offenders and informers, hated by other inmates. And they're strictly segregated from the rest of the jail. There are now 75 protection prisoners at Peterhead. Unlike the others, they do normal prison work. This is a refuge after the violence some have endured in other jails. I've, I've had a lot of trouble in Bullany. I've got my face slashed and my back slashed because I'm in for a release now. No? And he's supposed to have a price on me, but that it's to a false, I've not got a clue. I've, I've got that, I've got a cross there in my head, and I've got two big scars on my back. I could, I could show you them if you want. And when did that happen? When were, when were those slashes? That happened on the 12th of December, in 87, in the exercise yard. You've been a few months here now, Peter Head. Uh -huh. How do you feel now? Look, I, well, I'm still a lot. Well, I'm a bag of nerves since that's happened to me. No. Since what? Since this. The scars on my, my face and my back, just a bag of nails. It's the sex offenders who have most to fear from other prisoners. Before he was sent to Peter Head, Rab was tormented at Sockton. He was abused again by Peter Head inmates in A Hall and requested a transfer to this protection unit. During the Perth riots, his workmate, Peter, was taken hostage and seriously assaulted. For both men, this place has become a haven from violence. When I first came up, it was all right, and it started again. But then I was up in Hall before the riot, and uh, they started putting in notes, telling me if I didn't get dubbed up or I didn't get shooted, or the old axe, I was getting chipped. If I didn't chip, I'd, I'd screw. I'd, they chipped me, you know. What does that mean? That means I had to, they wanted me to go out and stab a screw. Or stab one of the staff, if you like. They wanted me to actually go out and do it. And if I did that, I'd end up doing life. I was in Perth. Uh, I was taking the hostage in Perth. Uh, I got my face scarred and my head scarred. And they just brought me up here after a, after a riot. What exactly happened? Uh, it was just after tea time on a Sunday. Uh, the first that we knew anything, well, the first I knew anything was up, was when they started to come through the wall on either side. Uh, Who uh, was this? Just two other guns. They just brought me out, took me up the stairs, and just literally continued slashing me. Yeah. A terrible experience for anybody, obviously. How badly slashed were you? Uh, I received 55 stitches in my face and two in my head. 
Two of the inmates who slash sex offenders at Perth are now prisoners at Peterhead. They live just over the wall from the hostage who was assaulted. One of the Perth rioters got 12 years for his crime, but the other was acquitted, and he feels he's been unfairly punished at Peterhead. I was in Biho for a year, and I never done nothing. I was at a trial, and the jury found me not guilty. They still put me in Biho. Although you were found not guilty, you were involved in the riots at Perth. Very intimately involved, weren't you? Well, I admitted to the court that I slashed sex offenders and stabbed them during the riot, but somebody had put LSD in a cup of tea and I told the jury, and the jury found me not really because I wasn't responsible for my actions. I had done it, I had not done it. Aye. Why, why did you do it? Because they're beasts and they're, they're, they're child molesters. They're raping people's... That could have been... A, I, I was thinking of people, other people's families. There's kids and all that. They, they got what they deserve, you know, that's what, they, that's what their punishment is, you know. Because they're child molesters. Have you any regrets about that, looking back there? No, on them, no. From Sea Hall, Peterhead's protection prisoners have a rare view of the outside world. This is a site denied to inmates in other halls. The freedoms enjoyed in the protection unit rankle deeply with other prisoners. But for these men, Peterhead means safety. Wouldn't they go to any other jail in Scotland? I'd stay here. If I had the chance to go anywhere else, I'd refuse. I'd just stay where I'm at. Well, I'm happy where I'm at. Oh, get my visit regular. Right I've got mates here. No, it's... I think going back into another jail would just cause for me trouble, you know. It's... I think I've got enough scars. The protection prisoners are now the biggest group of inmates at Peterhead. Most want to stay here to serve their sentences and more could join their ranks. This developing role for the jail could grow. Much will depend now on what happens with the rioters and the hostage takers, the inmates who live just over the wall. It's ironic, not to say contradictory, that the most difficult and the most vulnerable are cheek by jail. What an effect we have in Peterhead are two separate prisons, um, which must never meet. It gives me added complications in, in governing the prison, um, but it makes good use of the accommodation which is, which is here, and uh, it allows particularly the protected prisoners to have uh, a much more positive lifestyle during their sentence. But the governor's most pressing problem is to try and move prisoners out of B Hall. The um, most important fact which I have to keep in mind is these are the most, most actively disruptive prisoners in Scotland at the moment. I have to guarantee the safety of staff. Having said that, the environment in that hall at any one time is not totally negative. All of us are continually pushing individual prisoners to try to settle to their sentence to move on. I or my deputy will see these prisoners every day. The staff, senior staff in the hall will see the prisoners regularly. We're continually pushing them to settle to their sentence to move forward progressively. The governor may want to move inmates out of B Hall, but some of them won't shift. They refuse to cooperate with his new regime. They want out of Peterhead now to another jail. They don't want to jump through the governor's hoops to get there. It's me. Oh, it's all right. Which army are you? You put me in here for nothing. I'm on punishment. No, you're not in punishment. Which army? Well, Mr. Ogilvy came and spoke to you, didn't he? Oh, oh, oh. Oh, sort the CID. He helps everybody. He helps everybody. He'll help you if you give him the chance. I'll help you if you give him the chance. I'll help you if you give him the chance. How dare you give the chance? Don't just look at me. 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 Look at me.
Of the 50 most difficult prisoners in Scotland, only eight of them are held in those very restrictive conditions. I foresee that um, for the foreseeable future there will be a need for a regime similar to B Hall, where a small number of prisoners will require to be held in very restrictive conditions. But prisoners do move on from this tough regime. This is the next stage at Peterhead. Recently renovated, D Hall allows inmates a degree of freedom. Of the 12 inmates here, six are hostage takers. At certain times of the day, the prisoners can meet together in pairs. The limited association for D Hall prisoners is between three and five hours a day. The Peterhead rioter who took Officer Jackie Stewart hostage moved recently to this regime. There's a lot of anger inside me, and as you say, it was humiliating and dragging me along the roof, a big chain on his neck now, but so yeah, honestly, I think it was humiliating. I didn't agree with it, I didn't like to do it, but. It's the second time this year in D Hall for Malcolm. On the last occasion, he smashed up his cell. When you're cheating, man. Tried. You're looking at more of the words. I tried, isn't it? I tried. I was bored and I smashed uh, the fittings in my cell, the windies. But I explained to the staff I was bored and asked them for somebody to pass the time. It was just aggression. You know, looked at 24 hours a day and there's, there's a lot of aggression still to come out. Could you see that ever happening again, the riots that you were involved in? Could you see yourself getting involved in that oh, situation no, again? No, no, because no, this recently I've, I've sat, well, I've had time to think, no, where the, the period have been locked up. It's, it's, it's senseless, it's because I'm trying to get myself out of Peter's in prison in another jail to, for the sake of my family. Many of Peterhead's rioters and hostage takers are working the new prison regime. But they won't settle. They all want out to another jail. And still, violent simmers just below the surface. Open the doors. There's a lot of bittering men lying about this prison, filled with hatred by the place. There's still guys getting beat up every day through and beat up here. Guys getting tortured, humiliated. I see where guys are throwing a shite and that about and beat up. Someday, some guy's family is going to have a car crash or an accident coming up here, and the guys are going to come out of his cell and go down and snap, and he's going to go and kill a governor. It's as simple as that.